You want to show some pure disrespect, and you want to just blow your opponents off the board. That is the reason you play H4 on move one or A4 on move one, because it's all about disrespecting everybody and doing speed runs. Next video, we have a video of Magus Carlson. Extreme, but I think you told in the interview that if you want to play these kind of openings, you actually need to prepare them rather. So, so. Okay, so this is a video on Magus Carlson from Offer Spill from about uh, two weeks ago. This video was posted, and this is on Magus Carlson revealing his secret preparation with the move one to h four, which you see here on this chess-based board on the screen. In, with nice c six, you're gonna have some information advantage because the opponent probably doesn't know. It. So it's a it's a trade off like that. Well, h four is a little bit more extreme, but I think when well, you were giving that interview and saying that, well. You no, you guys, there are many videos. We watched we watched three videos yesterday, but not this one. There are, I think, are seven or eight videos. So uh, louder. Okay, I'll turn the volume all the way up. Um, but no, this is not the same video. This at least you need to prepare. Should be good, yeah, though. Yeah, um, I mean, to me, it's just really interesting. All these moves. Oh, like captions? H4. Sure, I'll put captions on. Sure. Um, there we go. Or A4, H3, 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 A3, and so on, where you play openings as um as black um to, to see like which move is useful in which structure uh, mm -hmm. and, and so oh, on oh i mean maybe we, we can quiz them but what is uh, what is the concept for black after uh, for example white actually white after uh, I assume we can give away well i mean the simple answer after playing one h4 is this you guys the answer after playing one h4 is that you want to put on some sunglasses you want to show some pure disrespect and you want to just blow your opponents off the board. That is the reason you play H4 on move one or A4 on move one, because it's all about disrespecting everybody and doing speed runs. Anyway, back to the video, you guys. Uh, let's, let's listen in. Yeah, yeah after, uh, well, first of all, after E5 was the... Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. C4, we go at F6. We had one specific idea in mind, right? Yeah. I forgot. Yeah. I don't know if my C3, if we think that we should be poison. I think we wanted to play G3. Yeah. Hmm. And, well, just so let's say the idea is like this. If you think of it with colors reversed, well, how would black normally play them with, with white, right? Exactly. Yeah, you would play the Maroxy. But here there is a considerable difference. Knight g5. Exactly. So knight c3, bishop e6, knight mm -hmm. f3, knight c6, that would be normal. And there, knight the g5. Other there is yeah. a big alignment with knight g5, but there the normal move is queen takes b5. But it's, it's actually protected now. So, I mean, so black has to think a little bit at least. I mean, the computer is also giving this slightly better for black, of course, but uh, still, I mean, well, we have preparation ready like that for uh, most of the rapid game on uh, The same with d5. We also have some. Um, well, the computer understands it immediately. I think I was trying to make the green flood with the form h4 work, but that's probably not a very good idea. Mm -hmm. This is probably too unreasonable to use time on, but. I think we thought we should play the Taras because against the Taras, well, normally, well, the system is supposed to be G6, right? That's what we do. But now, of course, we can play H5. So. I mean, that's probably the, that's where our preparation finished. You, know? you did okay in the game, right? Who was the against? Played against Wei Yi. What did mm -hmm. he do? Um, <coughs> no, I played the Taras, but he just played uh, like an E6. Ah, game. he played the. Uh, and then we just got that system. Yeah, he played something like, yeah, should you play it like this and then... Uh, yeah, just got much better later. Yeah, I played like knight f3, knight f6, then a3. Yeah. But white is not particularly worse there. Oh, I mean, I don't think white is mm -hmm. You were True. better in some... I was be much better and then it was eventually gone. Was this, this was this sort of piece... Yeah, I became this kind of ending, you know? yeah. yeah, Yeah, you were much better against me. So. And then a4 was very useful in the middle game. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. no, but also it's difficult for them, it seems... They can, maybe it's because they're playing you, but they cannot adapt at all to play in left uh, uh, after that. But, uh, anyway, 
Okay, let's, uh, well, yeah, I mean, basically uh, what they're saying here is important to note that basically when you disrespect your opponents and play bad moves like H4, A4, or other moves, psychologically it's very hard to stay objective and not be like, man, this guy's trying this guy's trying to be disrespectful, play some garbage. And so you want to punish them, even if it's still a normal position, even if it's a normal game of chess. Because Magnus has played like H4, A4, you're like, I got to crush him. I got to blow him off the board. He's fundamentally done something wrong in this game. When in fact, as you're seeing, it's playable. That doesn't mean the black's not fine, but you want to punish your opponent. And so you get uber aggressive, and then you, you let the emotion come in, and things kind of go wrong. But basically, yeah. I, I have, I'm very, like... I, I really don't look at engines much in preparation or otherwise. So, like, it doesn't really come up during games either. Like, oh, if only the engine doesn't like this, or... Mm -hmm. Engine... Um, likes these plans here or whatever um, it's just something that I don't know uh, if you say that you do not look with the engine does that mean that your preparation is done through books does it mean that you just turn off the engine when turn you off the engine the preparation inside of you? basically it means that I don't really uh, prepare like yeah. I talk about updates with uh, Peter, and then he looks at them, and I, I look at look at the lights. So Magnus is saying here that he is essentially a lazy bum, is what he is saying. He's saying that basically he does not look, he does not do a lot of work, and it's his trainer, P Peter Heine Nielsen, who basically prepares all the files, gives Magnus the files, Magnus memorizes the files, and that's what makes Magnus so good at chess. So at the end of the day, here we go, 100% talent, and he doesn't doesn't work at all. He's just he's just a lazy bum, right? That's that's essentially what Magnus is saying here. It's just like, yeah, Peter does all the work. I just I just open the file on chess space. I look at it. That's it. I don't need to do anything else. I'm just that good at chess. That's what he's saying. Um, and then I go play them. So to give you a mental image, I think after before the game against Jules, we have one. You asked me some question on Skype, and I answered it. But then I checked. Actually, your game was starting in three minutes. Right? Yeah. yeah. So, there it is. Uh, So yeah, usually I look up the lines and I just go through the lines and if, unless there's something like that I see that I'm really curious about, then I don't turn on, turn on the engines. And when I do turn, turn it on, like, it's usually just for a few minutes before, um, before games, just to, yeah, just to, like, check a certain thing that I'm really no, he's absolutely right. I know I'm not twisting his words, you guys. I'm, I'm, of course, like I'm going a little bit over the top, but it's not wrong. So what Magnus is saying, though, is he's saying he looks at the files and he really tries not to use the engine because one thing that happens when you use the computer engine too much is that you basically you start looking at lines, you start looking at these things that no human would play over the board unless unless they had prepared it before the game. And so when you do that, it's very it's very counterproductive because you waste time looking at lines that will never be played. There are many games even that I've played where in the opening I've looked at like the top computer line before the game. And then we're on like move 10 or move 12 or whatever in, in, in a random game. And suddenly I'm, I'm sitting there and my opponent's thinking, because, you know, I'm blitzing out my moves, opponent's out of preparation. I'm like, hmm, you know, there, there's this move that's, that's the best computer move, but it's like at the board, I'm suddenly like, wait, why can't they just play like D6 or D5? Why can't they play this move? It looks very natural. What's wrong with it? And I'm like, oh man, why didn't I look at this before the game? But I didn't look because when you're, when you're using computers to prepare, what happens is you only look at the absolute best move. You don't look at it as a human. You start only looking at it through the computer lens of what the absolute best move is. So it's it's definitely it, it is it is a real thing that when you only use computers to study positions, you start like losing perspective of how humans will play. Because a thirty five hundred will play the moves that Stockfish plays, but a human that's twenty seven hundred where you don't have prep, they will not play those same moves. That of course we we understand the team that, but uh, well, that is the premise. So if we are saying something works, we, we it, it it better work. If we are saying something is maybe not working, we also have to be honest about that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that's a, that's a good video. Let's watch the next one. Next video. Okay, anyone else? More questions? This is a video on Ma This is a video on why Magus Carlson plays bad openings. Okay. Yes, please. So, <clears throat> I mean, we can see that sometimes you play some openings that are, okay, let me say, kind of borderline with black. And um, well, what I would like to know is, uh, I mean, if you are aware of the engine evaluation and uh, or if it is something that your seconds are doing. And if you know, um, I mean, where you are getting the computer to, to play such lines, because 
when we sued them, for example, just to give you an example, this French you played in the World Championship, this Night C6. When you start to check with the engine, it's a bit tough to, uh, oh, to yeah, get yeah, confidence yeah. to play. Of course. Uh, um, I have to say that I rarely ever look at engines. Uh, like when I watch. Like I'll give you guys okay I'll give you guys a perfect example okay I mean I'll, I'll just I'll 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 change the scene for a second I'll give you a perfect example of why it's very dangerous to look at engines so let me reset this board here so I played a game in the um, Air Things Master the first game of the knockouts against Gukesh D Gukesh from from uh, from India and basically we had this um we, I think we had this uh we we had one of these uh, these these Nimzo lines where I think he played like he played like an early was it F3, B6? I think he played some kind of early H4. Actually, he didn't go F3. I think it was something like this, where after Bishop D3, Knight 6, he played something like H4, went like D6, I think. And then he played like... I, I think I played D6. And very, very quickly, I ended up in a lot of trouble in that game. Or maybe, maybe it was even with E4 first, and maybe I've got the wrong position. I think it was something like this, actually. And um, I ended up in a position where the computer actually said something like... Uh, something like... Maybe it was like this, where if white gets G4 and H5, white is doing very, very well. Um, I have the position wrong, so let me get the exact position. One second, Gukesh, Nakamura, Air Things. Um, I'm going to get the exact position because I, I have the wrong position. Um, uh, let me see if I can find it. Do, 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 do. Where is the game? One second, I'm just pulling it up so I, so I can give you guys a perfect example. Um, Gukesh. Is this the right game? Yeah, this is the right game. So, okay, so I, I have this game against Gukesh in the Nimzo Indian. He plays A3, takes, takes. I play C5. He goes uh, he goes E3. I castle, Bishop D3, Knight to C6, Knight to E2, B6, like I said. Um, and now he plays E4, Knight E8, and he plays his H4 move. Now, again, this position here is completely fine for black. You play it precisely. But in this position, as a human, I, I don't have access to the computer. I don't know what the best move is. So I play this move pawn to E5 here. And in this position, after e5, we get h5, d6, and he, he plays this move um, h6. Now, as, as I recall, I think that according to the computers, after, was it this position? After h4, e5, somewhere around here, I think in this position with like d5, knight e5, and maybe it's g4 already here, and d6, knight g3, white is supposed to be much, much better here. Like white is, I think with the supercomputers, white is close to winning in this position. But again, for a human... When you play this whole age four structure, it's not very obvious like why this is great for white. Like why should this be, be good? Like here, for example, d6 is the right move. e5 is not the best move. But it feels like in this position, you really want to be like you, you you're you're looking for like uh simple concepts as black. So like when you when you go for all this stuff with like d6, d5, and, and all of these sorts of positions here. If you're a computer and you know what white is supposed to play, like knight g3, g4, maybe even f3 and g4, all these different ideas, it gets very, very scary to play. But for a human who, you, where you cannot know what the best moves are, you might know that the evaluation is better for white, but you don't know what to do. So even though the computer says it's good for white, if you're looking at this as a human from the black side, it's much easier to play. So if you don't know what to do with white, you get in trouble. And that's why, actually, I played a lot of very logical moves in this game against Gukesh, and I beat him actually quite easily in this game. So you do have to be very, very careful when you see these engine evaluations and deciding, like, how how realistic is it for a human to understand the advantage versus only the 3500 computer just, like, knowing everything on the face of this earth. So that, that is very, very important to point out. So all right, let's get back to the video. Um, let's Let's keep watching games i usually try and avoid watching with engines mm -hmm. also very true um i don't really yeah i mean sometimes like when uh peter sends me uh files like i would like there's something that i'm curious about so i turn on the engine for for this but for most of the positions that i i have in prep um I know that you know Peter or somebody else who works with me has checked them. And yeah, uh, in 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 this case specifically, uh, I remember that um, the, yeah I wanted to 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 play this because reported played it. And Peter was also very positive despite the the fact that he was despite the fact that he was very clear that. Like, it's borderline, borderline. Lost. So it, it's not as bad as it looks, or it yeah. has a reputation. Of it. I mean, yeah. you were basically mm. surprised that it was not worse, something like that, right? Yeah, like, it's, like, 
bad, but not necessarily not necessarily losing. Uh, but I, I would say yeah, most of the most of the time when I play no league, I don't know what the what the engine says about it. Mm -hmm. It doesn't really help when you when you when you play like I know or at least I trust most of the time from Peter and, and others that it's that it's uh, you know not lost for um, whichever side I'm playing and apart from that yeah uh, the engine evaluation like it doesn't help you when you um, when you uh, when you play. Yeah, very true. I think Dubov once in an interview they were asking him why do we play the Philido. And he said, well, I can also turn on the engine, so I, I know what it's saying. It's actually on purpose. And, uh, well, maybe you don't turn on the engine, but you're still uh, you are aware of the risk. But uh, maybe this one didn't go too well, actually, right? But, uh, no, it actually went well initially. <laughs> yeah, maybe it did, actually. In both the games. But, I mean, the position is unbelievably hard to play. That's also one of the, uh, mm -hmm. one of the uh, problems here. Yeah, no, it's it's it, it's it's a very it's a very good point what Magnus is saying just in general about the um about the openings that like as long as you know what you're doing you have some general idea that's good enough like as long as it's not just outright losing you can play almost anything that you want to do so um that's that's what it is he he just needs Peter yeah that's all he needs he needs Peter has Magnus retired to become a mountain guide no so those of you who are wondering these were videos that were filmed during a training camp I think there were a lot of Indian juniors Renox at Wadi Pragna Nanta and others were at in Norway I want to say maybe like a month month and a half ago, something like that. But anyway, very interesting videos. Also just, you know, just watch them casually, but then even as someone who has played chess professionally, just seeing what Magnus is saying, seeing what I agree with and what I don't agree with. So um, important to note.